a blind traveler tours Lima, Peru. Okay, Lima, you good? What's the phone? The phone. Ah, where is it? I'm Mona Mincara, blind traveler, and I'm here in Lima, Peru. Last episode, I tried to get to the hotel using a bus, but I failed. I had to use a taxi. So far, public transportation is it real? Is it not real? I'm not gonna rest until we find it. Now, I'm settling in the hotel, and I'm excited to see what's ahead. Mona with the hotel manager. Welcome to Hyatt and welcome to Peru. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'll follow you to the elevator, yes. They walk together to the elevator. She helps Mona with the elevator control board. Thank you. I have to put the key here? Uh huh, okay, okay. Hold on. This is always tricky for me. Mona feels the buttons. Ah, oh, there's no braille. No, I just realized that. <laughs> but we will do it together. Now it is. Here. They press yeah. number four. Okay, okay, yes. okay, thank you. Thank you. You guys should get real on these. Yes, of course, we will. I <laughs> promise. Thank you, awesome. Bye. Bye-bye. She exits, the doors close, and Mona looks at the camera. Progress, one braille cell at a time. <laughs> You're watching Planes, Trains, and Canes with Dr. Mona Minkara, Blind Traveler. Mona in the hallway. Now I have to find the room. I'm glad that the doors have braille. Finally found it. Four, two, two. Nice. Okay, now we need to find four, one, six. Mona finds another door. Four, two, four. Great. So, four, one, six will be down this way. Mona zooms down the hallway with her bags and reaches another door. Four, one, six. Okay. Yes. Mona on the sidewalk with her white cane. I'm trying to find the hop on, hop off bus. But in order to get there, I need to find the public transportation bus. Mona reaches a busy crosswalk. As a blind person, when you're trying to cross the street, you have to analyze, determine that it's safe, then make a plan. First thing I'm realizing, there's no talking crosswalks here, so I have to cross the old fashioned way. So I wouldn't cross because right now I hear cars coming through. That means I listen for traffic and if parallel traffic goes, that means I can go. Okay, parallel traffic is starting, and I'm gonna cross. Mona crosses the road. Mona facing the road without a crosswalk. It's telling me I'm supposed to turn left here, but there is no safe way to turn left here for the walking directions. There's no traffic control here, so I'm not gonna cross. Mona reaches an intersection. Again, no talking crosswalk. Listening for parallel traffic. Okay, car stopped. Parallel traffic, Gwent, let's go. You know what, I'm running out of time. I have to go. I'm just gonna call an Uber. Okay, so again, I just gave up. We need to make it to the bus route in time and the walking directions were taking forever and we didn't find any Metropolitano buses. So yet again, can't find where this public transportation bus system is. So we found a lot of private buses, but not a single Metropolitano bus. But right now we're gonna go on the hop on, hop off bus. Okay, there's a few things that I love about a hop-on, hop-off bus. First, I love the feel of the breeze on my face. A branch whizzes by Mona's face. Did you see that? I literally almost got whacked. I think instead of a breeze on my face, I'm getting trees on my face. Mona ducks and dodges from tree branches. Okay, Mona, there are literally branches on the seat behind you. A good hop-on, hop-off bus is like I'm getting the summary of the city. Mona holds the iPhone and gimbal. And I really love me a good audio tour. Yeah. Camera phone goes flying. Mona shields her face. You good? What floor? The phone. Ah. Where is it? The phone flips through the air and lands on the street. A car runs over the phone. Another car runs over the phone. Where is it? I'm running down. Okay. Mona stands on the bus while Natalie heads down. Oh my god. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, the iPhone just flew away. We don't know where it is. Or hopefully. Back on the street, a lady picks up the phone. Gracias, mil gracias. Lo siento. Oh. You got it? Yeah. Where did it fly? Where did it go? I get caught on a telephone wire. <laughs> oh. Do you hear that? Yeah. Like, are we like taller than the wires? There's pieces of twig on the chair. Where, where was it exactly? On the street. 
Like where? Behind us? Yeah. And some lady picked it up. And then the car ran over the gimbal. <laughs> Ready? Highlights of today. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Mona reaches for the bus. <laughs> it drives away. Metropolitano! <laughs> it's time to hop off this bus and explore the city. Mona with a tour guide. I made a new friend named Radu. A tall Romanian man laughs next to Mona. On Plaza Mayor, walking to the Spanish cathedral. Mona inside the church. A high ceiling with religious paintings. A crypt with a display case filled with skulls. A security guard takes a picture with Mona on the plaza. They return to the tour bus. Thank you. You're welcome. Mona and Radu sit on the second floor of the bus. So what questions do you have? You said you had a hundred questions about... You're curious because you're meeting a blind person. I started with the stick. Now, yeah, the now. cane. I folded it, I folded it. Here. Yes, yes, Mona yes. gives Radu her cane. Here. Radu inspects the cane curiously. It's, it's just a regular cane, like a stick. Great. He gives it back, and Mona puts the cane away. Well, I'm 43, and uh, it's the first time when, when I meet a, a blind people to discuss with, uh, yeah, with well, the blind people. So, uh, but the reason why you don't meet blind people is not because they don't exist, it's because they're all hidden, they're not going out into the world. But there's a lot of blind people actually. But I, I think the, the percentage of, of blind people that are like you, you, you are the example for them. I don't see myself as an example for them. I see myself as talking to society. Let's change systems so that more people like me can also have access. Uh, Does that make sense? Uh, it, it makes sense in a way, but it's impossible. <laughs> because Is it though? It, it, it's, uh, uh, you, you are talking about changing the system. Uh, yeah. We, we can change only ourselves. No, yeah, we start, but we start talking to the system and start changing. For example, even today, like at the hotel that I'm staying at, I got in the elevator and the manager saw there's no braille on the buttons. And she said, wow, we need to change that. We need to put braille on the buttons. Mona and the manager of the hotel. And with small things like that, the impact is huge. Does that make sense? It makes sense. I know that it takes time, right? It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and maybe it, it takes more than our life. It, exactly. But the discussion is starting. Like that's, that's, that's what I can do, right? It's start the discussion. Largo Mar, the city by the ocean. They hop off the bus. Radu was so curious about me as a blind person that he decided to come along. Mona finds cane guides on the sidewalk. Yeah, so there's different cities like Tokyo where they have these, but they have like it's m much smoother. So the blind person puts their cane on it. No, no, no. no. And then here, they. No, no, no. Here it's not like that. Here, you are in the third world country. <laughs> but right now. If you think that is designed for you. It's still going. I really think it's a cane guide. It's good, but you think uh, in a good way. <laughs> you have this optimistic uh, approach. Yeah. Well, okay. You know the story of the curb? You know when you get off the sidewalk, some, the sidewalk goes lower, okay. so you can make it easy to go down? Okay. Sidewalks, right? They, in the past, they didn't have any cutouts, which means if you're in a wheelchair, you cannot go back up on the sidewalk. In the 70s, a professor in Berkeley started to protest because he was having a hard time getting to work, right? All the sidewalks were not accessible. Because of his actions, even a place like Peru has a cutout on the sidewalk. So people in wheelchairs can use them. And people even in using it like pushing a kid in a stroller. It didn't exist before. Yes, but a uh, stroller, it, it, it's, much, it's much common. It is, but at the same time, there's a lot of places that are not accessible to strollers. Like today, we went to the cathedral. Where would a person with a stroller do? Radu smiles and nods. Like, yes. it's, it's a mentality. To, to think that I only need to make something for the majority hurts humanity. If you think I need to make something good for everyone, to try to think for everyone, that helps humanity. It's, it's a state of mind. Let's go. No, it's great. So, what do you think? Is it worth it trying to change systems? Please, leave your comments below. Mona calls home.
Mariuma, Mariuma, Mariuma. Assalamu alaikum, my family. I come to you from on top of the Hapan Habaf bus in Lima, Peru. Really, some of the best food I've had has been here. So delicious. Fresh. Oh my god, I wish I can take you someday to here. We still can't find the public transportation system. <laughs> anyway, my cousin, I love you. A museum of chocolate. Mona Radu and other tourists select cocoa beans from a table. She roasts cocoa beans. This is amazing. She stirs with a spatula. And it smells amazing. Freshly ground cocoa beans. Wow. Wow. It's like aromas coming out of nowhere. She looks at her homemade chocolate. Ta da! <laughs> I did all of this. No, I didn't. Mona <laughs> takes a bite of her chocolate. The chocolate has like a sourness to it. Very good. A mosque in Lima. Mona enters. She stands in front of the crowd. If you know any blind people, like, it's very important to my heart, you know? A woman takes a video with Mona. Adios, adios. <laughs> Mona in front of the bus station. Hey everyone, so basically on this trip, using public transportation has not been really successful for me. But right now I really wanted to find this central station for the Metropolitano, which is the official public transportation system and see where it takes us. Mona enters the station. Central station sign. Ah, oh, the ticketing system's not accessible. So I had to ask Natalie for help. Natalie in the ticket kiosk. I don't hear any announcements. Mona guided by an attendant, waiting for the Metropolitano. There's no way I think I would have done this because I don't speak the language. They don't announce anything on, like out loud. I would need to really communicate with the locals to really understand like where I'm going. A local helps out Mona. Uh, muchas gracias. They speed walk to the bus. I think we're getting close to the Metropolitana bus. Here's the bus. Whoa. Mona on the bus. I really, I really, really want more people to use this public transportation. I think it has potential. The infrastructure exists. It's just they need to make sure that the, um, the information is integrated into Google Maps accurately. Um, Make sure, like, you know, announcements are clearer, they announce which bus. And these are all really easy fixes, considering that they have the buses and the infrastructure already in place. When I'm trying to transfer buses, things got harder. Um, so basically, I'm here with Natalie, and Natalie was like, Mona, I think we went too far, or I would have never known, right? So we got off, and then Natalie sees this map, and she's reading all these state stops, and none of them were stops that were <laughs> announced. I think the conclusion right now is that, like, I do have limits, of being able to navigate, like this is challenging for me um, to navigate public transport here in Peru. I would still be able to come on my own, take Ubers, it's really easy. But like public transportation wise, because there's so many competing companies and the information is so convoluted, it's really hard to navigate as a newcomer. Even though, honestly, this is pretty nice and I feel like more people should use it. They even had some accessibility features. There was braille on the elevators, door indicators on the ground, and even what might have been a cane guide. There's always a place for a well done public transportation system. City of Lima. Mona and Natalie walk up to a water park. I love the energy in this place. It's too exciting, exciting. A mini train rolls by. <laughs> There's a mini train. A giant fountain shooting jets of water into the air. Sailboats projected into the mist. Mona inside the tunnel of surprise. The surprise is more water. A traditional Peruvian dance. A woman, a man, and a horse dance in circles, flourishing their costumes. The man on the horse lifts his hat to the woman. I had a great time in Lima. I got to experience good food, make chocolate, met some interesting people, had interesting conversations about accessibility. Mona and Radu. There's value in everyone, right? And if you operate that there's value in everyone having access, then the society you build is one that's going to progress. On the next episode of Planes, Trains and Canes, Mona in a car. We're going to the foothills of the Andes Mountains to a village named Paran. The town noticed that there was a lot of blindness and they didn't know. And then doctors came and they said that it was genetic and then that made them feel very ashamed. Dirt roads of the Andes Mountains, a village at the end of the world. 
I came here to talk to them because they are my people, right? They're like me. Credits, the Plains, Trains, and Canes team, Mona Mincara, Natalie Guzzi, Benjamin Jimenez, Elizabeth Janney, Chris Harmon, Pithvi Rajmacha, Hazem Abu Khosh. Plains, Trains, and Canes is made possible by the Massachusetts Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and in part by the Graham Foundation for Advanced Studies in the Fine Arts. Please like and subscribe and press the bell for future notifications. Please tell your friends and your enemies and everybody else in between. Thanks.